Welcome back everyone to another episode of Big Red Isopods. And this week we're going to be taking a look at what, in my opinion, are the five best beginner isopods. So before further ado, let's get into it. All right guys, so I'm gonna start with number five here. And for me, number five has to be Armadillidium paracae or paraca, which is one of the Armadillidium species, which is very unique, a fantastic Armadillidium species, very prolific, really forgiving in nature as you can make a lot of mistakes and they still tend to thrive. Not that you wanna make mistakes, you obviously want them to have happy lives. But as a beginner, you're not going to know everything right off the start. You're going to make mistakes. It's bound to happen. And this is a very forgiving culture. It was one of the first ones I ever got and kept. And I had some problems with it. But they still grew in numbers. No problem. And they are a beautiful isopod. Really unique with that skirted look. And you can't go wrong with this. They're pretty much available anywhere. And it's a great isopod to have. Whether you're a hobbyist or you want to use it for a bioactive setup. All right, guys, so before I go any further, I will say that this might not be the top five easiest isopods because some of them are like ridiculously easy, but this is the top five easiest ones that you can take care of, of all the different types of species that I know people love. So for number four, I have Priscilla Hasi high yellow, which is, in my opinion, one of the easiest of the Priscilla species to take care of, the Spanish species. Um, it's a fantastic, really quick breeding species, very hardy. They don't seem to have too many problems when it comes to health problems. As you can see, they're a very beautiful isopod, very prolific, and just great to have. I think they would probably do okay as a bioactive kind of isopod, but I think they're really more of a hobbyist one. But that's my opinion on most of the Spanish species. Relatively cheap. You can find them pretty much anywhere. Great to have. For number three, I'm going to go with another off-brand species of Cubaris, which is Cubaris marina, which is a fantastic tiny little isopod. One of the easier and cheapest Cubaris species you can find. They're a fantastic one to have. Breed really prolifically. They don't have too terribly much color to them. Most of them are a relatively regular color. They don't stand out too terribly much. They do have a little bit of a stripe on their bum there, but other than that, they're kind of a gray. But if you're looking for a Cubara species to start out with and you don't want to spend that much money, these ones are widely available and they're from South America, so they're not that hard to find. For number two here, we're going to take a look at something a little bit more classic. We're going to take a look at our Parcellia prunatus powder oranges. Now, it could be any Procellia prunatus. I'm not just saying powder oranges are the best ones to have as a starter, but due to their coloration and their availability and the cheapness of them, they're probably one of the best. Just due to the fact that everybody has oranges or knows where to get oranges and they breed like crazy, extremely forgiving culture. They breed so quick that pretty much anything is not going to affect them. Pretty well, the only thing that's going to take them out is if you get a culture of dwarf whites in there, that might take them out, but it's going to take a long time. These guys are going to fight to the to the day's end just to breed and continue flourishing. Great isopod to have, and there's lots of different morphs, but I think the orange is probably one of the best for a start. Coming up at number one, which is pretty obvious, Priscilla Ulevis, Dairy Cows. Now, dairy cows are obviously one of my favorite isopods. A really handleable isopod can be found pretty well anywhere. Very, very easy to take care of. Extremely forgiving. Whether it's a brand new culture or an experienced person, everybody loves dairy cows. They're a beautiful isopod to have. They got tons of different markings and they're just easy to handle, relatively tough. It's a great isopod to have pretty much. Doesn't matter whether you've just came into isopods, whether you've had them for a while, whether you want to use it for a bioactive setup or you want to use it for a hobbyist purposes, you're going to want these isopods. I know a lot of people enjoy these isopods as well as I do. They breed really quickly. And if you really wanted to, you could breed them for a profit. It's extremely quick to breed them, 
A lot of people like them and it's a fantastic isopod to have. So definitely for sure deserves the number one spot in my eyes. All right, guys. So I know that might not be everybody's personal opinion on the top five most easy beginner isopods, but it's definitely the ones that I would pick if I were to start over again. Definitely some unique isopods in there, ones that are very forgiving, very easy to take care of. You're not going to really mess it up whether you accidentally make it a little bit too dry or accidentally make it a little bit too wet. These guys are going to thrive in any of those environments. They might not do the best that they can, but they're going to do well either way. So there's a couple honorable mentions I want to mention, which is obviously dwarf whites are a very easy beginner isopod. They do need a little bit more moisture than a lot of other isopods, but they breed like crazy and everybody knows that they basically can't be stopped. The only way I've ever seen a dwarf white be out competed is by a Florida fast. And that was a very unlikely situation in my mind. Another one is definitely the, um, the Priscilio scabers. Uh, those are definitely one, as well as Arnie Armandalidium species, I do believe, are a great beginner. But I, the scabers, they come in so many unique colors that you really just, you can't do anything else but just love them. Anyway, that's it for this week. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you guys all again next week. Alright, bye.